Okay, so I think we're going to get started. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us on this lovely sunny afternoon. Well, I hope it's lovely and sunny where you are. Um, welcome to our CV Advice webinar with Reed CEO and Chairman James Reed. I'm not James Reed, obviously. I'm Amy Davis, the Content Marketing Manager here at Reed. And before I introduce you to James, I just wanted to give you a little bit of background information on the man himself. Um, James has worked in recruitment and careers for more than 25 years. And each year, Reed receives 40 million job applications. And to date, we've delivered over 100 programmes, helping more than 200,000 people who had being long term and employed back into work. James's knowledge of recruitment goes unchallenged and you may have seen him on the news as a go to commentator on recruitment and the labour market. Um, he's passionate passionate about improving lives through work and as part of this um, he's an author of a number of best-selling books relating to recruitment and um, recruitment advice and that includes the one we're going to be talking about today the seven second CV how to land and in how to land the interview um, today James is going to give you some top tips from that book and take any burning questions you may have on the topic we have a number of pre-submitted questions so some of you on the call um, on the webinar may have already submitted your questions but do feel free if you've got any further questions as we go along to pop your questions in the Q&A um, which you'll find on the top right hand side of your screen James is going to present some best practice advice and tips for the next kind of 15 minutes and then we'll go into a 30 minute Q&A session. So without further ado, may I introduce you to James Reed? Good afternoon, James, and thank you for this. Hello, Amy, and good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for inviting me to this webinar, which I'm really looking forward to uh, sharing with you. Um, the subject of the webinar, as you can see, is the seven second CV which is also the title of a short book that I wrote a little while ago. Um, what to say about it? Well, if someone was to say to you, you know, you could write, if you could write one life changing document, you'd give it proper attention, wouldn't you? If you could write one life changing document, you'd be serious in terms of how you set about that task. And, and, and in effect, your CV is that life changing document because a good CV quite literally opens doors and it will get you in front of people who might be able to offer you opportunities that weren't available to you before. And this book, The Seven Second CV, is part of a series of three books. In fact, it's the first one. Um, this book is all about, as it's described, um, preparing your CV. The next book in the series is called Why You? 101 Interview Questions You'll Never Fear Again. And, and the third book in the series is Life's Work. And, and the, the series is meant to be our contribution, if you like, to helping people progress in their lives at work. Because as Amy described, you know, Read the Business has been going for more than 60 years now. And I've been the CEO of this business for a quarter of a century, dare I say it. And over that time, we've seen a lot of people and we've seen a lot of CVs and we've actively assisted people progress in their careers. And, and we wanted to put our best thinking into this series of books, this series of three books. So it's got my name on it, this book, but it's really a collective endeavor. It's crowdsourced. So when you look at the acknowledgements at the end of the book, um, there are pages of people listed and they're all people who've uh, contributed ideas, suggestions and their own experiences to the book. And I think that makes it very relevant and very rich because these are real employers who are hiring and interviewing right now and, and, and you'll hear their views and, and what they have to say. Um, so we put these three books together, as I said, to assist people with our best thinking and um, they're all available on Amazon. And, and I look occasionally at reviews on Amazon and I saw one for the seven second CV just now that I thought I'd share with you. I liked it. Um, it was a review that gave it five stars, which is very kind. And, and, it, and it was just three three letter words. And these are the three three letter words that mean the most to me. It was got the job. And, and our reviewer said, having read this through a few times, I settled down for a few hours and completely revamped my CV. On only the second job I applied for subsequently, I was successful and, unhapp and unhappily typing this from my desk in brackets, 
best not let the boss see me. And then the, our reviewer goes, goes on to say, I won't tell you how it was done, as this would be an injustice to the authors, which is very kind of them. But what I'm going to do in the next few minutes is tell you a bit about how it's done um, and, and share some of the headline thoughts and summaries from um, the book, The Seven Second CV, which I hope will be um, actively helpful to you. The first thing is, is, is you, you can see this title, The Seven Second CV. What's that all about? Um, some people ask me, does that mean I can put my CV together in seven seconds or is, is that how quickly this is, is going to take? And, and it's neither of those things. Um, what it means is very clear um, because we did the research that employers, people who look at CVs, won't spend a lot of time looking at yours or anyone else's. So we asked them how long they typically spend and the average that came back was seven seconds. So you know that's less time than it will take you to make a cup of tea or cross the street. And, and that's how much time um, they're going to spend in the first instance looking at your CV. Now that feels perhaps a bit unfair. That feels a bit disrespectful even. You know, you've put a lot of trouble into your CV, but that I'm afraid is the sort of reality out there. Um, a lot of these people are having to evaluate a lot of applicants uh, in a short period of time and they're under great pressure and stress. And sometimes now they have computers doing some of this for them as well. So the computer would certainly take less than seven seconds to look at your CV. So the seven second CV is a, is a title that's meant to express the importance of making sure your CV is the best possible presentation of yourself um, so that you will get the interview for the job that you want to apply for. You see, a, a, you know, a CV really only serves one purpose, and it's to get you the interview. And, and when, you, when you put together your CV, keep that in the back of your mind. You know, it has one purpose to get you the interview. The other thing I think is really important to keep in the back of your mind when you're applying for jobs, whether it's preparing your CV or, or going for an interview, is this. Um, a job, you know, when you think about it, is a problem to be solved. So all those uh, companies and organisations that are grappling with the challenges of the day, whether it's producing products or delivering services or, or, or supporting supporting you know the healthcare system or whatever it is all of those companies have a series of tasks and when they're hiring people they want you to help solve their problems so when you package up your cv and think of yourself on paper how are you going to present yourself as the solution to their problems so you know people talk about usps and your CV should present you as a USP. And, 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 and I like to think of it in this context, the USP typically is, is an abbreviation for unique selling proposition. And, and, uh, and, and I like to think of it in this context, your USP is unique solution to problems. And, and how, what sort of problems are you best placed to resolve for people? So that's a sort of by way of introduction. Another po point to mention here is the book, when, if, if, you, if you were to read it or to listen to it, has two voices running through it. Um, one of those voices is mine, and, and, and I'm hoping that it comes over as a sort of friendly career coach type of voice. The other is, is, is the voice of the recruiters. And, and these are people, either hiring managers or recruitment agents, who, who, who are in the day-to-day -day thick of it. And, and they have to make decisions and, and their, their, their voice is gritty and real. And, and it's worth paying as much attention to what the recruiters are saying in, in, in the book as to what I'm saying, because ultimately they're your customer. And, and on this first introductory slide, I think there's one other thing that I would, would want to stress here, is when your CV is completed, when you've got it ready to go, ready to roll, um, one test you must ask of it is, does it inspire trust? Does it inspire trust in you? Because when it comes down to it, hiring someone for an employer is, is a risk. Uh, and, and in some cases, quite a big risk. And 
they are most concerned and all the research we've done over many, many years is whether or not you or the applicants they're seeing are trustworthy. And, and there are two types of um, trust in, in my experience in the workplace. One, one is what you might call sort of pure integrity. You know, is this individual someone who's honest, true, <laughs> and, 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 and will speak the truth and, and, and behave honestly and openly? That's the first one. That's about our, our personal integrity. The second one is, is um, about our ability to do the job. So can I trust this individual to uh, deliver my um, my goods to, uh, to, to Norwich, you know, safely and capably driving my large vehicle? So to do the job, whatever it is, competently and to the expectations of, of of whoever it is that's employing you. So there's a trust aspect about integrity and there's a trust aspect of capability, I suppose. And so does your CV inspire trust in you for the job that you're applying for? And that's really important. So think about your USP and think about inspiring trust ultimately, because that is what people look for first and foremost when they interview people. You know, they want to get to know you. I mean, the CV will get you to the interview, but a big part of getting to know you is getting to know your character. So um, those are the sort of opening gambits. Um, what, what do recruiters want from a CV? You know, what, what are these hiring managers and recruitment agencies really looking for when they spend seven seconds you know, scanning your CV? Well, the work history aspect in many instances, it's not in all, but the work history aspect is um, very important. So if, if you if you've had, had some of a career or your early stage career, you know, the work that you've done will be of great interest to um, the people who are looking at your CV and how you describe and outline it um, needs to be thought through carefully. Um, having said that, the second bullet here is absolutely uh, essential. You know, your CV needs to be clear and easy to read. I mean, this is straightforward stuff. But it's absolutely essential that when they look at it, they can see what they want to find quickly and easily. So they might be looking at for your work history. They might be looking at your qualifications. They might be curious about your personal statement in terms of what you're saying you really want to do and why. But they want to be able to pick that information up quickly and easily. And lastly, the third point here is they want to get to know you. You know, they, they want to they want to begin to get to know you and they want to understand whether you're someone they'd like to invite in to talk uh, to an interview. So bringing out your mindset and personality in the CV, if you possibly can, is, is important. And when we surveyed employers, this was for another book I, I wrote um, many years ago um, called Put Your Mindset to Work. We asked thousands of employers all around the world, you know, if you only had two applicants to choose from, one had all the skills required for the job, but not the desired mindset. And the other had the desired mindset, but not all the skills. Who would you hire? And 97% of our employers surveyed said the second candidate B, the candidate who had the desired mindset, but not necessarily the skills. And, and they knew, employers know, that obviously skills are important and the ideal candidate has both, but employers know that the world they're working in is changing very rapidly and the skills required to do jobs well are changing very rapidly. And that uh, you, as an employer, are looking for people who will learn, adapt and grow with the business. So they're looking for people who as well as being trustworthy, are adaptable, committed, um, and, and will rise to a challenge, if you like. And, and that, that's about your mindset. So mindset is extremely important. And it, if you can get that across in terms of challenges you have met before in, in previous roles or achievements you've made that show that you've shown resilience or you've come up with ideas, creativity, imagination, or that you've been a person of great kindness and integrity, that's all good. So those are the things that you want to try and include. These are what I call the fatal five. These are the things that um, 
uh, will, will undermine your application and will mean more likely than not that your CV will end up in the reject pile. Um, a lack of relevant work experience. I mean, it depends very much on what the job is you're applying for. And a, a lot of people, I think, quite fairly say to me, you know, I don't have much work experience because I've just left school or I've just graduated and all these companies say they want two years work experience. Well, I'm urging companies that are saying that to be more critical of themselves and to ask themselves whether that's absolutely necessary because often it isn't and, and people can learn and grow in the job. But in many instances, relevant work experience is really key. And when you're when you're preparing your CV, I think it's important to stress that you don't have to just have one CV. You can tailor your CV to the different jobs that you might be applying for by stressing experiences that are more relevant to that employer over experiences that might not be. And I'm not saying make things up. I'm just saying you know what you've done in your career to date. There might be some things that are more relevant to your application for employer A, so emphasize them over others. And similarly with employer B, you might change your CV and tailor it to make sure that the application is right from there. So that, that's important. This point about spelling and other mistakes. I, I, I remember talking to a client of ours a few years ago and I was quite shocked. This individual ran a, a big uh, uh, bank, um, their whole graduate recruitment function, and she told me heads up, you know, I get thousands of applications every year and we have to sift them down. And, you know, I said, well, how do you do that? How do you start? And she told me heads up that um, she goes through them all. They went through them all, the team, and they put every single CV that had an error in it on the reject pile. And she said hundreds would be rejected on that basis. And that is very common and it's actually very reasonable and understandable when you think that attention to detail is really important in many jobs. To the extent that you know, I don't want people sending messages out from my company littered with spelling mistakes because it doesn't reflect well on any of us. So attention to detail is important in many jobs. But having said that, it's very easy, very easy to make mistakes when you're writing a, a CV and preparing a document because after a while it, it, you can't see them anymore. So I think it's important it's important to get other people to, to proofread your CV for you. And I would suggest more than one and to do it more than once because it's so easy to miss these mistakes and they're so damaging if your document goes out with them. The other things that, that, are, that are here, I've mentioned the importance of clarity of layout. I would say a short CV is actually better than a longer one. My preference, I mean, there's a bit of a debate about this. My preference is to get the key information in, on a single side of paper. Obviously now with digital, a piece of paper is not quite so relevant, but in a way it's the same challenge. But, it, you know, as someone once said, it's much harder to write a short speech than a long one. I think having your CV on a single page of paper is ideal, whether it's one sided or two, I would try to limit it to that. But one side is better than two in my view, but I think I'm in a majority in a minority on that. Um, not enough information. Well, that's the challenge if you're trying to if you're trying to distill it down to a, sh a shortage document and frequent job changes that raises an alarm bell um, in some employees, depending on the type of job you're applying for. And there might be good reasons for that. Um, such as perhaps that you're working as a contract worker or a temporary worker, agency worker. So if you've been doing lots of different things um, because that's your choice or preference, then that's something you need to make clear. If you've had a series of, if shall we say, less than successful um, employments, um, that, that is more problematic and you might want to think about why that was and perhaps change course or emphasize in your CV that you're seeking to start a new direction because or you have learnt skills and experiences from these from these various um, changes that will be useful to you and your future employer partner in the future. So those are the fatal five. Um, moving on. Here are the, the basics that you know, employers say to us that they think that a lot of people just don't know how to write a CV. And, and, and why would you actually? Because it's not something that, unfortunately, we're typically shown how to do. And I, 
I don't think that it's on the curriculum in schools, although we're working to change that. Um, and, and I think it, it's something that's so important, you know, a life changing document potentially should have proper attention. Here are the key basics that we need to make sure are inside your CV and are properly represented. Um, obviously, you, you need to make sure that your name and contact details are there clearly so people can follow up and, and, and invite you to come and meet them. Um, the skills, I don't particularly like the word soft skill because I think in many ways they're the, the hardest, but they're often these character qualities and mindset qualities and aspects like communication skills, I think are very important and you want to make sure they're woven through uh, your document. Um, clearly then your, your work history, as I've mentioned, um, and, and your education, you do have qualifications and educational achievements that would be um, good to add. Hobbies and interests, some people say, well, why do I need to put that in? Um, well, I think that can, if you've got an interesting hobby or interest, why not? Because that tells your prospective interviewer more about you as a person, and it might be a conversation starter. So I actually, I actually like that section and I always look for it. Um, what to leave out? I, I think that the elements on, on the right hand side are uh, very clear. I mean, that's changed over time. And, and I think it's very important that everyone is given equal opportunities in their applications uh, and, and through the interview process. And I would leave all of those things out. Um, Moving on to the next slide. Some sort of tips here, what to include, what to avoid. I don't like getting um, CVs that are full of cliches, you know, and some of them are listed here. Um, you know, I've seen so many of these and, and they don't tell me anything about the person on the other side of this document. Uh, and so don't waste your time putting those sort of things in. And I think, if I was to summarise the what to avoid section, try not to be too long winded and try and make sure that um, instead you're keeping it concise and you're using positive action oriented words and phrases to describe who you are and what you're about. Um, also here, I, I, I've said it's not just words, it's also numbers. You know, if you're in a business type role and you've been involved in building a business or making sales targets, say so or if you have been involved in managing large groups of people or even small groups of people, yeah, that's um, that's always good too, because it makes it real to the reader. Um, that's very important. So at the top of the CV typically will be your personal statement. Um, who are you? What can you offer? And what are your career goals? Um, so I, I think of this as your sort of headline really, and every job and every individual is different. You know, every job that you'll be applying for is different and every every individual preparing a CV will be different. And it's important that you you encapsulate what you really want to say about yourself in two, three sentences at the top of the CV. And an and important part of that is what you want to do next, because an employer will look at your statement. That's probably the first thing they'll read and, and see is what you want to do with compatible with what they're looking for. So here, here are here are a couple of examples. I'd say a little on the long side. I mean, they're taken from the book. Um, and um, one of the things that you'll find in the book and also on our website in the careers advice section is we offer different templates for different types of CV that suit different people at different stages of, of, of their careers. Um, so one here is aimed at skills based personal statements aimed at someone who's recently left education and hasn't got a long work history. The other one is someone who's had a work history but wants to do something else. Um, so you know, depending on your situation, there will be a CV template in the book and indeed on our website on read.co.uk that will be suitable for you. And these are two examples of a personal statement that might suit someone at, at those stages in their working lives. Um, I'm conscious that I want to get to questions and I'm, I'm taking up much too much time. Quickly cover letters. Um, when you send your CV to a prospective employer, you need to write something to go with it. I would suggest um, not everyone does, but I think it might be helpful. And if you can find a little bit more out about the company, who you should be directing your CV to personally, um, there's no harm in that. And maybe summarizing in your letter why you want to work there or why you find that an exciting prospect or what attracted you or interested you about their particular opportunity. 
I think that will help your application. In some instances, they're not required. Some employers say don't bother, but I, I can't see any harm in it at all. And keep it brief and succinct, but um, you know, make it quite personal why you want to pursue this opportunity. Um, lastly, some sort of top tips. You're trying to pull together what some of the threads of what I've been talking about. You know, CV, a lot of people have for many years thought, you know, the CV is dead or it's going to be replaced by something else, but it's got a, it's a remarkably resilient thing. And, you know, it, you know, it's lasted. And I think it will continue to be important because a CV is quite literally a summary of who you are. And, and it means in, 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 it comes from Latin, curriculum vitae, the course of my life. Um, it's not that you're meant to be writing an autobiography, you're literally putting together a summary of the important salient points in your life and experience that you want this person to be aware of so that you can progress uh, your career and pursue that particular opportunity. So it's a marketing document. You are presenting yourself um, to others and it, you want to present your particular um, strengths and, 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 and advantages. Secondly here, put yourself in the mind of the reader. I mean, imagine that you're someone who's looking at lots and lots of CVs, has limited time and, and has particular problems to solve. You know, that point I was making about a job being a problem to solve. Try and get in their head and try and um, present yourself in a way that will be helpful to them. And then lastly, ensure you can include points of differentiation um, because each of us is different. We've all got strengths and it's those strengths that you want to put forward. So make sure that you do the best job for yourself and that you include things that will make you unique, your, your unique solution to this particular problem. And, and I think that I don't want to understress that. You know, a market, good marketing always differentiates a company from another company. Similarly, um, your CV should do the same. So I hope that's a helpful summary. It certainly picks up some of the themes in the book. The book is um, short and I hope enjoyable to read. I'm going to turn over to you now for questions. I know we've had some pre-submitted. I'm looking forward to hearing if there are any more from our audience today. And um, also I'll put on the screen the book. If you want to put your camera over that QR code, it takes you to the book. Um, so over to you for questions. Thank you for Brilliant. listening. Brilliant. Thanks, James. Okay. Oh, my um, oh, yeah. my mouse just stopped working there, so I was a bit slow coming back on the old mic. So we have got some pre-submitted questions. The first one is from Neil Taylor. He asks, he's currently unemployed, and I know you talked about varying the personal statement, but he's asking, is it worth varying your CV completely, I suppose he's asking, depending on which position or industry you're applying for, because he says that he's got quite a varied career so far. So sh is that is that a good thing to do? Well, as I said, you don't you don't think you should just have one CV. You you can have multiple CVs. So um, I suppose an important thing to do before Neil is, is think about what actually you want to do next. Because if you haven't if you haven't done that work and you've got multiple jobs that you might apply for, it means you're going to end up doing a lot of work on CVs when it might be better to think I really am interested in one or two particular areas and have CVs that are appropriate to them. So I think it's important in your own mind to decide where your preferences are and um, you know go through that process. And then when you prepare your CV, yeah, it should be tailored. That's the word we use, tailored to that particular job uh, and opportunity because that will be helpful to the employer who's looking at it and I think to you. Brilliant. Thanks, James. So we've got another one come through from Marlene. Um, she, she asks, what if um, her needs, which is not in education, employment or training learners, have little or no work experience to add to their CV? Well, this is this is often um, an issue for young people um, coming into the um, workplace, Marlene, and, and, and um, there is a format in the book for, for recent school leavers that I think is helpful. And, and um, I, I would say though, if you're going, if you're, the CV, as I said, is a summary of what you've been doing and who you are. 
you know, if, if you're in that situation, if you can do anything, may, maybe volunteering or a part time job or a temporary job or anything that is sort of outward facing in, in your community, um, then that will be helpful. And, and, and when you get to meet employers, um, they will be pleased to see that in your uh, document. So, you know, don't be dispirited by your lack of experience. I mean, ex your experience will grow as, as 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 you grow older, inevitably. And I think one of the challenges that people sometimes face is that they don't necessarily see that one experience in one particular aspect of their lives is actually giving them skills that are quite relevant and transferable to another. So there might be other things that you've been doing where you've been developing skills, be they communication skills or organization skills, all sorts of skills that could be transferable to uh, direct employment. So there's, there's, there's quite a lot of information in the book about how to evaluate your skills and also a template that might be helpful to you. That's great, James. Thank you. Um, Violet Beck asks, what are your recommendations about the visual design of a CV? CV. So there's there's a bit of debate, isn't there, about pictures on a CV, no picture on a CV, that kind of thing. Yeah, I think, I mean, my, my advice would be keep it clear and keep it simple so that the key key thing is that the people looking at it are looking at the information about you that you want them to know and they're not distracted. Some people ask about putting pictures on CVs. Uh, I don't think that's right or necessary, although now it's more common and I mean it used to be a bit of a no no I don't think that's the issue or case anymore if you want to put a picture on I wouldn't say don't in any circumstances do that I think it's probably fine and and I think that's because of social media you know there are lots of sites like LinkedIn where people have their pictures and lots of information so um, that's a personal matter but it's not in terms of how they're reviewed in those seven seconds that's probably not going to change much I mean it's taking up space that could be used for something else. Brilliant, thank you. Um, Carly asks, how does she make her CV stand out? Well, I don't know you, Carly, but you will have <laughs> all sorts of unique personal qualities and, and abilities that you need to evaluate, really. So one of, one of the sort of exercises is, is to write a list to gather up all your ingredients. You know, these this might be things you've done or your educational achievements or work and training that you've done or other interests but you know put all the ingredients together that make you up and and then um and then think of which of those you want to put into your cv that will make it stand out and and give you the best possible portrait pen portrait of yourself brilliant thank you we've got one here from um zishan sorry if that's not pronounced correctly is having different job roles and a time gap concerning on a TV. I presume you mean and numerous different job roles and a time gap. What would you say to that, James? Well, I suppose the question that would be going through an employer's mind is what's going on here? Um, and, and why are there lots of job roles and why is there a time gap? And there'll always be reasons. Um, and, and so one thing that is particularly important is that you you approach your CV with absolute honesty because you know we have a business in Reed that evaluates and screens CVs for um, our clients and we have a hundred people who are checking out CVs and 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 then they will look at references and other other data points to screen candidates and it's amazing that forty percent of the CVs that we screen come back with with an error in. So it, it, it might be that the error is a genuine error. Um, so let's say it's an untruth. It might be a genuine error that someone put the date in wrong or typed it, made a mistake. Or it might be a malicious error, but 40% have errors in. And so you must try and avoid that. You know, as well as typos, you make sure what you say about yourself is accurate because Lots of employees are very understanding of career gaps or, or, or full starts in careers because many of them have had them themselves or their family members have. But what they won't tolerate is people trying to disguise what's going on. So it's, it's really important 
to explain. Uh, and 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 in, in addition to explaining why this gap might be there, which there'll be a variety of reasons uh, potentially for why gaps might be there, um, but I think it's important just to explain it so that they know what you, what your reason was. And th there are any number of reasons for a gap in a CV. I've heard multiple, but what's important to me is that the person is open about explaining it. Brilliant. So there's a couple of questions that are similar that have come through. So Claire McLean asks, what's the best way to condense a CV of many years valuable experience into two, three pages without losing relevant information? And then we've had another one come through just now saying, if you have a long career history, 40 years plus, how far back should you go with a view to trying to keep it short and snappy? I guess there's that. What should you do once you get to a, once you've got lots of experience and history to keep it condensed? Well, 40 year history, you're going back to the 1980s. Um, and I don't think that's particularly pertinent to, to now. I mean, it's kind of interesting. But so, I mean, you could put in a line what you were doing in the 1980s, I would suggest. Um, uh, and I think what's most important and most relevant is the recent career history. Um, and assuming that you, you want to carry on in the same line of work that's the, the, the bit obviously in a, in a reverse chronological cv that will be at the top of the page beneath your personal statement you know so someone of my age and stage isn't going to be putting gcse results in their cv obviously i mean that would be a, a, a peculiar thing to do but someone of you know starting out in their career might well because there might be you know that might be something that is, is helpful to them to present so, you know, there's a bit of um, reflection required here, but I think the, the most recent is, is most important. If you've, if you've got multiple, if you've had multiple jobs, you, you might put the most recent three, I would say, and then set, and you could say, prior to this, I worked in a number of sectors over you know, these decades and learned X, Y, and Z or something of that nature. But you can really, you can really condense that. And I think that the, the, the power of a, a, a well edited document is far more important than a, the, the sort of extra information you get from a more rambling one because people won't take the time to read it. You know, they, if you if you have some dense paragraphs with every detail of what you did in every job, actually they won't even read it. So, you know, communication occurs in the mind of the reader or the listener. Um, your job with your CV is to communicate to them, so make sure you get the salient points out and the most recent will be the most important. Brilliant. OK, another one that's come through just now. Um, any tips for cover letters and how to make them complement the CV? Well, there's a, there's a whole chapter on that subject in the book. Um, <laughs> it depends very much what you're what you're applying for. Uh, so. Um, I. I my my view is that they shouldn't be more than two or three short paragraphs. I think you should begin broadly by saying, you know, why you're applying, um, why you're a good candidate, uh, and that you hope that they will consider your application favourably and, and invite you to meet them because you'd very much like to. And, and you can embellish that to an extent, but that's the key message. You know, you want to come across as no one, no one can fault enthusiasm. So you want to come across as an enthusiastic applicant who, who is, is, is keen to have their application progressed and to meet the people involved. Because when you go for an interview, um, just as important is the questions you ask them as they ask you. Because an interview is a conversation between two people who are trying to get to know each other with a view to whether they want to work together. So, you know, I think showing enthusiasm, curiosity around the business, that's all very good. And, you know, if you've done some research on the business, which you should do if you're applying, you know, you could mention something you've learned or found out that interests you or excites you in the cover letter. On the back of kind of talking about cover letters, Jessica Marin um, asked, do you think the cover letters have become obsolete now um, with CV solely being used um, with the rise of popularity of like these e easy apply features. I think we've got something similar on read.co.uk UK and there's one on LinkedIn. What would you say to that about the cover letter? Well, I think there's a case for that. You know, I mean, it's, they're not applied everywhere, are they? And 
I think that's a shame in a way because it shows extra extra diligence on the part of the applicant that this is a job that they genuinely interested in. You know, if you've gone to the trouble of preparing a cover letter as well as your CV, you're not merely just posting it um, machine gun style on, on a number of buttons. So I, I think that's I think a cover letter is a good thing to include if, if you're an employer. I can see that not everyone does, but I don't think that diminishes their relevance. Fabulous. Kirsty's just asked a question. How long would you recommend staying at one company for? You mentioned frequent job changes aren't looked upon favourably. Is one to two years still OK? Is there no room for if there's no room for progress in that particular role? Kirsty, I'm not sure you're asking the right person, but I've been in this company for 30 years. So, <laughs> so, you might wonder what, what I know about CVs on that basis quite fairly, but it is um, because we're looking at so many all the time. <clears throat> I, I think it it's perfectly depends what stage you are in your career, but I, I mean, it, people embarking on their career regularly have two, three, four, five jobs of two years, three years at a time before typically they settle on something that they really like and want to sustain and I think I cover this to an extent in my book life's work because you know early out in your career I think it's really important to find what you enjoy you know mantra read is love Mondays and I think it's really important that you know we all only live once that we should find a, a job or work that we enjoy and I, I believe that to be possible for everyone and, and I think in a way you should keep looking until you have so so I don't think there's a hard and fast rule on that. But it, I mean, the suspicion is when people see lots of, of churn is that the, the, the person hasn't been bringing the right mindset to the work in a way that they, 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 they haven't shown the commitment or, or the, um, you know, the desire to be successful in the job. So as long as that's not the case and you can explain why you did the X, Y and Z, then it wouldn't be a problem. Brilliant, thank you. Louise Page asked two questions, so you might want to do one one really quickly and one one less time because I think you answered a little bit earlier. Um, what advice could could she give? I presume she's a teacher. Her year eleven and thirteen students to help them create the most effective CV. You did say there was some stuff in the book on on CVs for when you when you're starting out in your career. <laughs> yeah, well, one one piece of advice would be to have a look at our careers advice section on read.co.uk which is totally free of charge um you might want to get a copy of the book for the school library but you can get a lot of this information that i've been sharing with you free of charge from the website and there will be templates there <clears throat> and we work with a lot of people who haven't got cvs and help them create them and you can do that very easily and actively from the um templates on on the uh website and I've done that with my own children, helping them you know, as they leave school, prepare CVs. And I found it very easy to use and, and we've ended up, they've ended up with quite positive documents. So I think, you know, that that's very doable. Another thing to mention is we've got a new product coming out from Read called Gateway to Work, which is specifically aimed at schools. And it's a it's a digital platform offering that will enable pupils to go in and they can they can access a whole range of um, services including online work experience but also advice on creating cvs and how to prepare for interviews and how to choose areas of um, activity or career preference that might might suit them best so that's a new product the gateway to work which is 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 or will be available this autumn it's coming soon and 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 it's very important to us we really want to support young people leaving education into employment you know for too long that's been a, a troubled journey and we'd like to make it a much smoother and a, a more pleasant one for everyone involved brilliant she asks also how can she make her teaching cv more attractive to the private sector well <laughs> it depends what you mean whether you mean private sector education or private sector or other business um i think i mean if, if, if you're thinking of a career change then that you need to think about tailoring your cv accordingly for a, a, a look at the career change template um or if you're thinking of moving from state education to private education i, I would have thought emphasizing your accomplishments in state education will be very helpful 
Brilliant, thank you. And then one last question has come, come in from Joe. If someone has listed their GCSEs, is it OK just to put the subjects taken or are grades required? I, I've never been asked and I have never asked what GCSE grades um, someone has got. So I don't think you, you I don't think you would be asked or I don't think it would be of great interest. If you've done A-levels, I think, it, and if you've done well in A-levels, then I think it's quite helpful to put your grades. GCSEs, I, I, I think you should just list the subjects you've done. I mean, if you you could say if you've got good grades in maths and English, you could put that. Um, but I think beyond that, I, th I, I don't think it would matter. Brilliant. Thank you, James. So I think that's about all we've got time for. We we got through quite a lot of questions there. Um, so if you're looking for some more advice on the CV, um, obviously James has mentioned you can scan the QR code and that will take you directly to his book on Amazon. Please do check out um, read.co.uk and the resources on there and read.com as well. We'll send you some resources in the follow up email. Um, today's webinar has been recorded and we will send it to you as part of a follow up. Please feel free to share it. It might be useful to other people you know. Um, it will be hosted on our website. Um, and James will be taking to Teams Live once again on Wednesday, the 20th of July at 1 p.m. Um, if you're interested, he was doing another webinar this time on how to ace the job interview. And that's the on the back of his second book in the series, Why You? Um, we will also send you the details of that as a follow up if you would like to register for that free of charge as well. Thank you so much, James, for your time. Time. really interesting even for me that's not looking for a job but yeah really really great bits there um thank you so much and i hope you all have a great afternoon thank you very much thank you everyone bye bye bye